There is a folk saying that goes thus. In times of yore, someone told the Lord of Geo that there was no life to be found in barren stone. Thus did the Lord of Geo command flowers of purest gold to burst forth from the face of uneven rock. Perhaps the Geo Archon did once work such a great wonder. Or this is but one of the many tales that shroud this ancient world. But the prosperous harbor that grew out of the lifeless mountains, braving the raging waters of the Sea of Clouds, perhaps that was the brilliant flower after all. They say that in ancient times, when the world was in turmoil, Rex Lapis plucked mountains and turned them into great birds of prey. Carved out of rock and jade, they soared above the ground once they had taken shape. Spiraling towards the heavens, they pierced through the clouds and flattened many stone peaks therein. They say that these rock kites spread their wings and dove towards the ocean, and they fell from the sky like comets, right into the heart of the sea and the monsters within. And they say that the pillars of stone that jut out from the ocean continue to attract birds to this day. Even rocks that have stood firm for time immemorial will eventually disintegrate over time, crumbling into dust and gravel. Legend has it that the Lord of Geo once made the glittering stars of the earth into devices for telling time all the better to teach the ancient humans about the value of every moment. Over time, this sundial came to be the prized possession of Quan Wu, who was then still a scholar in training. When I was young, I dreamed of studying the classics and going to Sumeru to attain the greatest wisdom. Yet when attaining this dial, I played with and examined it for many long days and could not find in it a single flaw. Thus, I changed tacks and sought a master craftsman to learn a new trade, and thereby challenged the creator of this divine tool. The Lord of Geo's goblet behooves basalt to be impregnable, and crystal to shine in its translucence. Going incognito among mortals should be likewise, exquisite in its enjoyments. Folk legend holds that to drink wine, Rex Lapis brought forth bedrock and carved jade and lovely stone into a wine vessel for himself. Some even say that there were once seven such vessels. It is said that during the years when gods contended against one another, Rex Lapis's aspect was that of boundless slaughter. In those god-eat-god -god battles, one could never have ascribed gentleness to him. He knew right from wrong and never missed his mark. In those days of tumult, he would show no mercy, even to friends turned foes. Rex Lapis's stone-cold expression never once changed throughout that storied age. They say that only when the dust settled did he lay down that unmovable visage. But it had been necessary, for he had donned it to fulfill a contract. In celebration of my wife's pregnancy, I went to the shrine to give a votive offering. But for reasons unknown, I went up the mountain with these objects. A water balloon from when I was seven, a fox mask from when I was 17, and a flower that would not wilt in 10 or even a hundred years. Why did I expect to meet her again? No matchmaker introduced me to her, and we were always short on money. It took some time for us to produce an heir, but our days were still filled with happiness, were they not? 
Still, I detoured on that mountain road to the place I'd seen the fireworks with her. As I pulled the branches apart, I thought I saw her dressed in white, sitting upon that rock. But when I came forward and looked, it was just a fox sunbathing. It leaped up at the sound of snapping branches and fled into the woods. And like the spots of light that poked between leaves moved by the breeze, it was gone in a flash. All that was left was an old throwing dart. During the summer festival, I was separated from my parents. It was but a moment, but I had wanted to look at the water balloons and let go of the hand that had gripped my father's sleeve. Before we knew it, the tide of people escorting the divine palanquin had washed us apart. I cried by the Tory gates along the road to the shrine, and I counted the feet of the people ascending the mountain. I don't know when it happened, but a beautiful lady with fox-like eyes had come to my side and taken my hand. How preposterous of them to leave such an adorable child here. Come here, little one. Would you like to see the fireworks, throw some darts, maybe play some Fusen with me? On the night of the summer festival, as I walked the path to the shrine with the girl I admired, I heard only barely the sound of a lost child's cries. At that moment of distraction, I fell, spraining my ankle and breaking my pocket watch. While she ran to look for some ointment, I tried to make way for the people passing through. So I sat down on a rock by the wayside to rest. The beautiful mask-wearing woman sat down beside me. There are few who know about this spot, but it's truly the best place to watch the fireworks. It should have been a dream. We hadn't met in 10 years. She hadn't aged a single day in those years. And yet... You've grown so much. Maybe we should pass on the game of Fusen then. I brought wine though. Let's watch the fireworks together. What do you say? Some may label it an imitation. A false life. For life lies in change, pain, and growth in meetings and partings. But the memories of meeting her, of watching the fireworks bloom in the sky like fresh flowers together, the memories of that foxy-eyed woman who eventually disappeared without a trace, that unwithering flower is the final thing to remember her by. In the end, the difference comes down to the fact that for some, life is as eternal as an undying summer bloom, but for most, it is as transient as a puff of smoke. People will often take on the guise of the fox of legend, covering their faces with masks based on their divine visage, perhaps wishing that they might gain her ability of transformation. In Inazuma's legends, everything has a spirit, but even so, it is likely that most such beings would have long fled, driven into the forest by the suppression of the Shogun. But many people still believe in these divine foxes and the ability to be indwelt by them. They believe that thousands of years of age may confer power upon animals. As such, they also believe in what this fox mask represents. A note has been left on the back of this mask written in a lovely hand. I'm sorry. I have departed under the cover of the fireworks. We will most likely never meet again. Please take care of yourself. 